Say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. You are too good in my life. And I love you. Praise the Lord. The end of August does not mean the end of love. There are some people may say, thank God August is finally. Thank God, this love, love thing. Ah, thank God. Listen, the month of August may be over. The practice and the practical is just beginning. Praise the Lord. And so don't, don't say that it is over. It's just the beginning. You know, love makes you to glitter. Frowning people are always looking sad. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You can't have the Holy Ghost and be frowning. If God is love, and if you have him, where will the frown come from? There are people that find it difficult to laugh. Amen. Amen. And my father and the Lord will say, a day without laughter is a lost day. Praise the Lord. How many of you have laughed today? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, there's a way you can laugh at the devil. There is a way you can laugh at the devil and make him angry. Papa Hagen said that a man of God came to preach for him. And then as he came to preach, you know, you take offering from guest, for guest ministers. And as he was about to announce to take offering for the guest minister, the devil said, are you really going to give him a love offering? For what? And Papa Higgins said to the devil, for you saying it, I'm going to give it twice. And if you say it again, I will make it triple. And if you say it again, I will quadruple it. He said suddenly he didn't hear anything again from the devil. Because the devil is not going to let, allow a man of God to get double offering. Not to talk about triple. So you can laugh the devil to nonsense. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He wants to put headache on you. Say, <laughs> so devil, you never get tired. I cannot be sick. I refuse to be sick. By the way, I don't have time to be sick. And then you get up on your feet and said, I'm going to do God's work. I'm going to do God's business. And then, uh, and then, Headache can go back to the sender. Praise the Lord. Now, my daughter called me a few weeks ago and said, Daddy, my leg, I've been standing all day in the shop. I'm, I, before she finished, I said, Tell your leg, will it come and meet you at home? Or will you go with it? She said, What? Did I, I said, Tell your leg, sh are you going home with me? Or will you come and meet me by yourself? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You can create joy within you. Which one is that everybody made me sad? Why? Why? Nobody will make you sad. Nobody will make you sorrowful. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you don't want to get old, get to laugh a lot too. Yes, Amen. Amen. All the vegetables will not make you be young. Oh. Otherwise, you will have one in stomach. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I have made up my mind long time ago. I'm not going to be old. You may have problem with that, but that's your problem. You already have other problems. But I have made up my mind. Say that I've made up my mind. I'm not going to be old. 
He renews our youth like the eagle. Have you seen an eagle crawling? No. Have you seen an eagle crawling? I've got my mind made up. I've got my mind made up. I've got my mind made up to serve my Lord Jesus. I've got my mind made up. I've got my mind made up. Because someday I'm going to see my Lord Jesus. I am looking forward to that journey. I am expecting that journey. I'm not going to go on that journey on a wheelchair. I'm not going to go on that journey with crutches. I'm not going to go on that journey looking for what to wear. The Bible said, Jacob said, gather all the children of Jacob. Bring them. Time. It has it is time to go home and like Jacob went that's the way we go gather all the children of Alpha to him it's time to go home Kasha bring in all the checks are you hearing me begin to call their names hand them the checks hand them the checks hand them the checks hand them the checks Hand them the checks. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then after that, let them bow their knees. Pour an oil upon them. And tell them, see you on the pearly gate. I'm going now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And there will be an instruction. If anybody cry, I will beat you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Through a party that I have gone. Through what? A party. A good one. Praise the Lord. He said to them, I have made provision for that party, you 10 million naira. I'm saying it now. All of you are looking at me like this. In the next 60 years, when it comes to a party, you say, Daddy said it too. What are you saying? I am not going to be a poor man again. It's too late. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. They say that pastor talk too much. What about those that talk too less? How are they? Say I talk well. Because I am well. Because my expectation is well. I will have whatever I say. Shout hallelujah. Matthew 11, Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Please take your seat. Come! It's an invitation. Unto me, anyone, everyone that labor and you are heavy laden. Do you know what heavy laden is? Load you cannot carry. Load that is too heavy for you. He says, come unto me. If you fall into the category of those struggling with the load. Have you seen a man trying to lift something too big from the ground? He struggles, struggles. The thing keep pulling him back to the ground. He wants to get up, but he, the weight cannot let him get up. And Jesus said, Come. Come. And I will take the load off you. And I will give you rest. Praise the Lord. You need to know that Jesus is a rest giver. You can't come to Christ and be in crisis. Listen. Understand. If salvation does not change you, sin will change you. Remember what I... 
let's say, let me say clearly. If salvation does not change you, sin will put you in chain. C-H-A-I-N. Because the, the, the whole purpose of the devil is to make sure that you are in chain. And he has set the captives free and broken the prison door. Come and see what the Lord has done. He has set the captives free and opened the prison door. Come and see what the Lord has done. There is no captivity that's beyond redemption with Christ. None. But the invitation says, come. Come. All. Oh, all oh, that labor. All oh, that is heavy laden. Matthew eleven twenty eight. He said, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Jesus is inviting us to learn from him. He said, For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. You will find rest for your soul. Praise the Lord. He said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We were talking about the mighty men of Jesus. Everyone that comes to Jesus and submits to his word becomes a mighty man, becomes a mighty woman. Jesus produces great men. Praise the Lord. Jesus produces what? Great men. And if you will allow Jesus to touch your life, he will make something great out of you. What do you need to do? Work on your relationship with God. Two Wednesdays ago, when Pastor Isaac was ministering, he said we can all do more. And one point he made where we can do more, number one, is we can work on our relationship with God. We can do more. And that is nothing short of Rema revelation. You can walk up. You, are, you know, <clears throat> have you had some people that come to you? Well, I don't know about you, but the, the, the people tell, you know, tell me this from time to time. Say, Pastor, nobody called me from the church. Nobody visited me in the, from the church. And, and, and they didn't do that. And I will look at them and I will say, ah, so you know somebody should call from the church. You know somebody should visit you from the church. You that know it, let's assume we don't know it. What did you do with the knowledge? Amen. Amen. So you know that church should visit. You know church should call. You know it. You are complaining that nobody visited you. Nobody called you. Assuming that we are ignorant. You that knew, what did you do? What did you do? But you were expecting that somebody from the church should call you. Quite right, we should call. But what if we don't call? Did you call us? Amen? Amen. We equally need as much call from you as you need from us. That's the truth. Relationship is both ways. Amen? If you know I should call you and I didn't call you, then you should call me. It's not true. Because at least you know it. And what if I say, oh, I didn't know I should call you. He said, Pastor, you should know now. Why? Praise the Lord. You see, everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to be cared for. Do you understand? Everybody wants to be embraced. The Bible said there is a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Amen? Amen. There is a time to shake hand and say it is well. There is a time for encouragement, for inspiration. In the family of God, we are too loaded to be idle. Did you hear what I said? We are too loaded to be idle. If 
every one of us, we are a carrier of gift and grace. And all we need to do is to exercise it, is to work upon it. Do you know? Do you know the best way to remind people that they failed in what they're supposed to do? It's not by shouting. It's by you doing what they ought to do and they failed to do it. Did you hear what I just said? The best way to remind people that they didn't do what they're supposed to do is not for you to shout. It's for you to do it instead of talking about it. That is love. When you know to do good and you fail to do it. It is a sin to you that know it. Amen? So, instead of just expecting to be loved, stop expecting. Begin to love everybody. Begin to reach out to everybody. Do you understand? You can look at people that are lonely in church and reach out to them and sit with them. They may be lonely for a reason because nobody wants to sit with them. Praise the Lord. There are people you can ask, have you eaten today? There are people. A family cares for one another. And Jesus truly cares for his church. Jesus cares for his church. He said, come unto me, all ye all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And I will give you rest. We need to work on our relationship with God. Amen? As I believe I said to you last Sunday that this Sunday, by the grace of God, I will teach about submission. Submission. Should I still teach that next Sunday? Because, you know, people don't understand the, the, the powerful principle behind submission. No, people don't get it. They don't get it. Even when a husband is saying, uh, I'm your head, submit to me, the husband talking does not understand submission. He's only taking advantage of the knowledge. Amen? Amen. And then, you hear some wives, I don't want to disobey my husband, so me, I don't want trouble in my marriage. I, will, I have to submit. That is why I couldn't come to church. You already have trouble in that marriage. You already have what? Trouble in that marriage. And I encourage any believer, especially leaders and those with ministry, especially leaders, when it's time to say I do, before you say I do, have a paper, written document. You, you are marrying me as a leader. I put you under Christ to swear that you will never allow me to be outside Christ. You want to marry me? You want to marry me? Put it down in writing. Pastor is my witness. God is my witness. Unbelievers sign what they call prenuptial agreement. Unbelievers. He said, I don't want to lose my place in Christ. I don't want to lose my place in ministry. How did the person locate you? The person located you because when you were ministering, he looked at you and said, Hi, fine babe. He located you on the pulpit. May he not take you to the pit. No, are you hearing me? Yes, sir. He said, ah, that lady can pray. May you continue praying after. When Jesus gave the invitation, in John chapter 10, Jesus said something to us. And I want to read that scripture. John chapter 10, from verse 9. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. And Jesus said to us, I am the door. Every house must have a door, isn't it? You cannot enter into the house without the door, isn't it? He says, I am the door. Anyone who enters in through me will be saved, will live. 
anybody that enters through me will be saved and will lock with what we leave also praise the lord he will come in and he will go out freely and we find pastures now come on that's liberty right christ he says if you come by me he says i am the door if you enter by me if you find entrance access by me he says not only will you be saved but you will live not only will you live he says you will have liberty and you will find pasture so if this is what jesus says how can a christian become poor how can a christian become poor do you know that if i sit with you and listen to you for 15 20 minutes i can tell you why you are struggling financially if i listen to you if if, if you have an appointment and i sit down with you and i listen to you for 15 20 minutes not more not more not more i can tell you why you are suffering financially it's as simple as that it's as simple as that faith is an act prosperity is an act poverty is an act it will shock you poverty is an it's an act it's very easy for you to become poor by what you say. It's very easy. For instance, many years ago, when we wanted to start pro audio business, pro audio business, pro audio is all these equipments. You may, you may like to know that all these equipment was part of our product that we sell as pro audio. All these things. Amen? When we were about to go into the business, I looked for the best company we can work with. No, I looked for a company. And the first company I located was in U.S., Teles Communication. And they're very big, and they're still there. Others were going to China because it was cheap. I went to U.S., I went to U.S. and signed distributorship agreement from U.S. Then the U.S. company bought a pro audio company in Germany. And they said to me, you don't need to come all the way to U.S. Now, you can buy your product from Germany. So they transferred me from U.S. to Germany. And from Germany, we were importing one of the most expensive pro audio equipment in Nigeria at that time. And people that met me said, Ah, brother Fire, you cannot make it. These things are too expensive. Nobody will buy it. And that is the mindset that if you listen to, you become poor. What do you mean nobody can buy it? What do you mean that nobody can buy it? Are you serious? Are you serious? A woman is in Auchi, and I am in Lagos, and that woman supplies me peanuts all the way from Auchi. Why? Because of the quality. The price does not matter to me. It's not the same price with Lagos. Amen? When I order it tomorrow, Thursday, by Saturday, Sunday, it will be delivered in Lagos. Peanut. Peanut. Who will think of that? Her quality created the buyer for her in Lagos. And you are the one saying that nobody will buy it. You, you are the one saying it. And with your mouth, you create a web of poverty around you. So when the rich are driving, they will not see you because you say nobody. And so when the poor are passing by, they locate you because you connect with them. Do you know that if you have nothing to do with drugs, you can live an area for 10 years, you would never know they sell drug there. Are you hearing me? Because it's not your thing. It's not your business. But the person that smokes and takes drugs, one day in that community, he will tell you where they sell drugs. Amen. 
like beget like. You need to know. If you find yourself in company of poor people consistently, don't just blame where you live. No, no, no. It's not where you live that's the problem. It's your heart that connected you there. And so, when we started the project, they said to me, we should be in Alaba. We should have a shop in Alaba. They said that if you are not in Alaba, you will not make it because Alaba is a place. Alaba is a place. And I said to myself, I actually went to Alaba once, once to have a look. And I was shocked at the place, the size and all that. But I didn't see a place for me in their midst. Amen. I couldn't fit in there. I could, we just pray that our children will be distinguished and distinct. If you don't think distinctively, you will not be distinct. And so, you know what? I made up my mind, we don't need to be in Alaba. I realized that there are pastors that I know that they will like style and quality. Not every pastor, some pastors. And all I need to do is get across to them. Praise the Lord. Pastor Paul Adefrasen, House on the Rock. We are good friends. I started from there. I started from there. And it was Pastor Paul Adefrasen that connected me to a lot of other of his friends. And then somebody linked me to Reverend Tom. Reverend Tom to Pastor Chris. And then it goes on like that. Do you understand that when you are distinct, distinct grace will locate you? You will never find me where the masses are protesting. I'm not a mass. Amen? I am unique. Christ makes you unique. You think uniquely. You act uniquely. Praise the Lord. Even when I came back from UK, I could do weird these things. See, this thing, give thanks to mommy for these things. When I came back from UK, what I wear is jeans, t-shirts, sandals, and I will attend all my meetings like that. I know that I've walked into some boardroom meetings when they looked at me. It's like, what are we doing with you here? Then when we sat down to talk, they realized that they didn't know anything. Amen. Jesus will take you to places. He says to Elijah, I have commanded a woman to feed you. (laughs) Praise the Lord. I have commanded somebody to feed you. Go there. Go there. God said to Moses, Go down and do what I ask you. He said, your brother is coming to meet you. He said, he will be happy to see you. No, did you hear what I said? There is a way this God moves. Even those that say when they find you, they will kill you. When they find you, they will kneel down and say, please bless me. All you need to do is walk your relationship with God. Praise the Lord. I remember the company of Prodio, at a point, because of some transaction that went bad, I was owing them some money. So I didn't go into Germany when I was supposed to go. So they called my PA. They said to her, tell Mr. Afa that we are going to call the embassy and we are going to stop him coming into Germany and we are going to do something to him when he comes. We are going to arrest him and all that. You know, so when she called me, I said, well, that is ridiculous because if I don't come into Germany, you won't get money. So that's even funny. And besides, tell them I'm coming in two weeks' time. She asked me, am I still coming? I said, why not? I said, we did a business transaction that went wrong, and I will pay them. And so I landed in Munich. From the airport, we drove straight to the company. As... I entered. She didn't tell me she was afraid that day. It was after. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 
Because the Bible says that the righteous, they are as bold as the lion. As, who is the man that will make me to be afraid? If God be for you, who can be against you? Praise the Lord. And when I went into the company, their director, executive their marketing director, when he saw me, he got up from his chair. Oh, Mr. Afa, how glad I am to see you. How glad. He, he came and he hugged me. He said, oh, thank God you are here. How was your trip? Was everything okay? How is Nigeria? And my PA was standing in the corner looking. Is it not this man? Is it not this man that met threat against this man? And yeah, he said, he said, do you want to drink coffee? I said, yes, coffee. He went and served me coffee. And he said, can we go out for lunch? I said, yes. No matter, don't take those offers. But because of the day, said, when we left, my peer was saying, hmm. <laughs> mm, that people, are you hearing me? When you are in Christ, no one can turn to you. The same man, we had another issue. Some years later, we had another issue. He said, I'm going to take distributorship of Nigeria from you. I'm going to take your, our product from you. And I looked at him. I looked at him. I said, Mr. Klaus, when you are gone from this office, I will still be here. He said, what are you talking about? I said, when you are gone from this office, I said, I will still be here in this company. But you will be gone. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then, I think it was two, three years later, we went for exhibition in, in Frankfurt. I heard that he has been removed and transferred to Dubai. I went to their booth. I said to him, Mr. Klaus, how are you? He said, yeah, my friend, how are you? I said, I heard that you are no longer in Germany. He said, yeah. I said, I told you. He said, what are you talking about? I said, I told you. Praise the Lord. Your God is bigger than any man. Your God is bigger than any company. Just walk on the, be on the right side with Jehovah. No man can threaten you. Praise the Lord. When doors refuse to open for others, when you show up, it will open for you. Jesus said, I am the real door. When I open for you, no man can close. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And we were selling expensive product. We had few customers, but we were doing good business. It's not multitude that matters. Amen? Quality product. Quality grace. Jesus said, come. All you that labor and are heavy laden. I don't know why many of you are not working on these teachings you are getting here. If you will apply the teachings you are getting here, let me tell you, you won't be where you are today. You are a young guy. You are hearing this message. You have had my testimony. And all you do is that you look, you look, you look and press your phone. Where will the phone press you to? Praise the Lord. You have a phone. That's a capital. Amen. Your phone is what? A capital. Your phone is what? A capital. No food for lazy man. They write it on some vehicles. <laughs> Amen. No food for You can build a business from nothing. Ex nihilo. Creativity from nothing. Amen. Do you see children that sell lemonade in front of their house? Buy sweet lemonade. Children. Okay, it's not common here. In the summer, in Europe, in America, you see two, just five, six years, they will get lemonade and they put it in front of their house. And they say, buy sweet lemonade. Teach your children to be creative financially. Don't just teach them to be consumers. Are you hearing me? Teach your children how to invest whatever they have. But if you are not creative, if you don't invest, 
How can you teach them? I told you, it is not possible for me to be poor. No. Devil have tried now. He failed. So he left me alone. He left me. You know why? You know why? Jesus said, you will go in and out and you will find pastures. Normally, the things I've gone through, I'm not supposed to be even having a, a roof over my head, talk less of having my own house. The challenges, the troubles. Well, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not even supposed to have a rented house by what I have gone through. And I stand here to tell you that it's God that did it for me. And it's the same God I'm presenting to you every day. Amen. Why are you not believing? No, why are you not believing? That's a problem. I still know. Many years ago, about, let me say, just about over 20 years ago, two people came to my office, my family friends or family relatives, they came to my office. And both of them came to see me. They needed help. And I asked them, one, what do you want? He said he needs money to start doing something. I asked them, what do you want? That one said he needs money to just keep up. There were two of them. I gave them 10,000 10, naira. Two of them, right? They said, thank you. They left. One began to eat his money. The other one went to Kotonu with the 10,000. What did he buy? No, no, sorry. He went to Abba. He bought laces. Laces, different designers. And then he came back to Lagos. He bought used machine. He didn't have a shop. He attached himself to a shop of one of our relatives. What was he doing? He was sewing gloves, white gloves. White gloves. He started with 10,000. So one day he called me, he said I should come to his shop. I said, you have a shop? He said he has gotten a shop. I gave two of them 10,000. 10, so one has invited me to come to the shop. So I drove all the way from Ogba to Yaba, near the railway. There's a market there. What's the market? Teju, Teju, you know it. That market, praise the Lord. You know it. <laughs> and I went there. When I went there, not only does he have his own shop, he has gotten two of his own brothers to work in the same shop. I asked him, is there money in this thing? He said, ah. He said, uncle, you don't know. People buy gloves to get married. I said, I know that. He said, also, when people die, they wear gloves. I said, I didn't know that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I didn't know that. He was the one that taught me that. I said, I didn't know that. He said, ah. He said, you know, every week somebody must marry or somebody must die. <laughs> do, you, do you understand what I'm talking about? I said, <laughs> I said, I hope it's not you. <laughs> Amen. Do you know, he went on to employ six people. He went on to open a shop in Naba. What was he doing? White gloves only. White gloves. People were taking from him to sell in the market. He became a manufacturer. How much? 10,000. Months later, I saw the second person I gave 10,000. I said, how are things? He said, ah, things are bad. I said, what happened? He said, that money, <laughs> that money, <laughs> That what he wanted to do, the money was not enough. So what did you do? He said, ah, instead of him to die of hunger. He said, he ate now. And now, and now he's hungry again. Another one has employed people. This one is hungry again. Poor people are always hungry. Are you hearing me? Let me tell you, even when the rich are hungry, they won't tell you. I remember many years ago, it was Christmas Day. 
and I've said this before, Christmas Day, and I didn't have food in Benin. I didn't have food Christmas Day. And then I went out to look for any bookatin where we can just eat on Christmas Day. We looked. There was no bookatin open on Christmas Day. We came back home. What did I do? I drank 1.5 liter of swan water. And I laid down and carried my book and began to read. Today is a story. Amen. It wasn't because I don't have a place to eat. I could have gone to Abba. My family food there. I could have come to Lagos. My family food. And I will eat. If you are driven by food, you will always be hungry. Do you hear what I said? Just like in giving, if you give because and according to your need, you will always be in need. The only way to break the bondage of need is for you to give beyond your necessity. If you are driven by food, you will always be hungry. I have found this out and I can tell you this. Praise the Lord. You don't pretend about it. Are you okay? I am fine. There are people that give you food to mock you. And so, right in my uncle's house, they will prepare food. They were all my mates. Some of them, you know me. They will prepare food. You know, the boys, they were serving my uncle. And they will sit around the bar and the soup. They said, let everybody come and eat. And all of them will be eating. eating. A circle like this. I will look at them. They said, am I not eating? I said, no. I said, no. Poverty is an act. I refused to act it when I was poor. I cannot act it now. God has blessed me. If I had acted it then, I would have remained with it. Have you noticed that many of the actors in Hollywood, they stay with what they act? Have you noticed? Those that act poor man ends poor. Those that act rich, somehow find their way rich. Praise the Lord. Devil does not understand act. Whatever you become, whether he's on stage, or in life, that's what you be. If I'm ever to work in Nollywood, I will only act. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You already know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Any road that is made for billionaire, billionaire, are you hearing me? Billionaire. Because it won't be difficult for me to act because I am it. Amen. So that's why it's, it's difficult for devil to make me sick because I don't know how to be sick. I can't act sickness. I can't just be sick. Amen. It's difficult for me to be what I cannot be. Do you understand? I don't know how to beg. And so I avoid things that will make me to beg. You're supposed to be there at 9 o'clock. You came quarter after 9. You start telling 18-year-old security boy, Oga, Oga, let me in now. With all you are dressing, you are a graduate. You are 25. 18-year-old is putting you outside the gate and you are calling him, Oga, please. What a shame. How did you make it? Because you didn't come on time. Praise the Lord. Get your papers when driving. You won't get it. So a policeman will stop you. Huh? <laughs> uh, officer, I beg you. He said, my friend, go and stand there. No, no, no. I don't know how to beg. But one thing I do know is that I do know how to plead my case before the throne of grace. That's something different. Many of you have become professional beggars. 
It doesn't take you time. Hey, John. Hey, John. Praise the Lord. Please now. Please now. Hey, John. Uh, which other one? How do they say it in Aosa? Eh? Please, I don't want to. I have tried with the one I spoke. Shout hallelujah. We should be like Jesus. Jesus never begged any man for anything on earth. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Righteousness is a force. Righteousness is what? A force. There was a time I was talking to a few of my relatives, and I said to them, I said, look, look, I am not where I am by chance. I said to them, none of my contemporaries that are doing something genuine, something that people that we graduated from school together, not one of them is higher than me. And I mean it. Not one of them, and quite a number of them are in U.S., Quite a number of them are U.S. Some of them are in U.K. when we graduated. Amen. God is the lifter of our head. When God lifts you, others will look at you like this. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And that is why you must connect with people. People that they've been hungry before, but now they are no longer hungry. Don't connect that those that said, I used to be hungry from them, but at least my case is better. No. Connect with those that was once hungry. Today, they feed the hungry. Are you hearing me? Because when you come to them as a hungry person, they will say, no problem. No problem. I will take you to another level. The Bible said those that came to David, they were in debt. They were outcasts. They had problems. But David became a captain over them. Your submission transformed your situation. Your submission. <clears throat> you come and say, look, I want to submit to you because I want to learn. I want to grow. You don't learn by questioning. You say, eh, where do you say I should go and stand there for 30 minutes? Tell me now. Don't just make me look like a mumu. If you don't obey the ridiculous instruction, you will not see miraculous actions in your life. Praise the Lord. Young people, let me shock you. There are businesses who can still start with 50,000, with 100,000. There are still the business. And I'm telling you, I am telling you, there are businesses that you can still start. I can start one business with 50,000 and in two months it will become 100,000. I know it. Why is it you don't know it? Because it has not been revealed to you. Because you have not been taught. Because you have not learned. Begging does not change anything. There are businesses you can start with 50K, 100K. You can start it in this Lagos. You know why? There is always somebody somewhere looking for something unique, something different. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You can make it. Amen. You can make it. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes, you know, just strolling on our street and I saw our sister that is doing business up the road and I said to her, I said, look, you can change this business. You know, pastor stops over your business place and talk to you for 10 minutes. You should leave what you are doing and follow what pastor said to you. Go and do what he said to you to do. Amen. For me to have stopped over there and spoke for five minutes or so to her, that was more than enough to change that business. Mary said to them, whatever he tells you to do, do it. If you have not come to that level, you are not ready for change. 
The centurion said, I'm a man under authority. I said to one, go, he goes. I said to one, come, he comes. He says, speak the word, and it will work. And Jesus only spoke one word in less than three seconds, and the miracle took place. And the man of God speaks over you for five minutes, and you say it didn't work. Where is the problem? Think about it. Jesus said, come. In Matthew 4, 19, he said, come. Luke 11, come. Hebrews 4, come. The invitation is extended. It is up to you to accept it. And like Pastor Isaac said last two when he says, building up our relationship with God is the is number one area where we need to do more. Walk. Do you know that you can develop your relationship with your pastor? You can build up your relationship with pastor. Some of you say, how can I get my relationship with pastor? How did I get my relationship with pastor Chris Oyakilome? With Papa Adeboye? With Bishop Oyedekbo? How? No, how? What works then? We still work today. Praise the Lord. 